Hi guys, this is Vineet and in today's video we will cover integration services ETL project tutorial and this will be the part 6 of this video. So guys, if you haven't watched uh, from part 1 till part 5, please go ahead and do so. Start with part 1. If uh, you cannot directly start with part 6 because it covers the, it builds uh, on top of the material already covered in uh, part 1 to 5. So please go in sequence and if you have already uh, watched videos till uh, part 5 and perform all the practicals, let's continue with this. Before we proceed ahead, I would request you guys to please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. There is a subscribe button below this video. Click on that subscribe button. It will give you a bell icon. Click on that bell icon. Select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos. Uh, I hope you have subscribed by now. If not, please do so immediately. Now let's move ahead. There are some points to remember while watching this video. Please watch till video till the end to gain better clarity of the concept and if it's possible for you, please watch this video twice or as many times as you like until the concepts uh, get clear to you. Perform any exercises in your lab and test environments only do not touch any production environments or production databases. We would like to know your thoughts regarding our videos so please do share your comments with us any comments, any suggestions for us, any requirements of yours. Uh, also let us know about any day-to-day -day uh, situations with SQL Server that you have encountered. Also let us know about any experiences where my video content uh, came to uh, use for you or um, let me know about the situations where my content has helped you somewhere in some situation. Let's move ahead. I have created uh, some playlists for you to watch. Uh, some of the playlists are uh, database design playlist, uh, tables, business continuity, indexing, performance tuning, integration services. These are all the playlists and uh, the better way to learn about any topic is to go through playlists instead of watching videos randomly for various topics. I would highly recommend going through all the videos in the playlist. So if you want to learn about any particular topic, like if you want to learn about the SQL Server integration services, for example, I would suggest going to integration services playlist and watch the videos from start till the end to uh, get a good grasp on the integration services area. Right now I have posted uh, more than 170 videos on my channel. So there are lots of useful videos for you guys. So you can watch them out. You can watch out uh, by browsing each playlist as I have categorized the videos under each topic. Uh, apart from that, I have a channel link page. The links are given in the description both for the channel page uh, as well as for all the playlists. So please check out the video description area. Now let's come back to today's topic which is uh, in which we will cover the integration services ETL project tutorial. And this will be the part 6 of this video. And let's go to notes quickly. So in this part, we will be covering the logging as we discussed in our towards the ending of the previous part. So we will we will be covering, we will be adding logging into SSIS project. And in previous video, we have talked a little bit about the logging and the various log providers available in uh, integration services. Mm -hmm. Now this will be a practical video where we will uh, try to utilize all these uh, loggers basically now we will go step by step so the first step will be to copy the existing package so far that we have created till the previous video so let's copy the package let's go through this step now in this task we will create a copy of a package that we had uh, created so far and if you didn't complete it, the previous parts uh, of this video which is part 1 till part 5 uh, I would highly recommend and suggest you to go through all those parts before you can start with this part all right all right so let's go ahead and go through the practical stuff let's create the copy of a uh, package that had uh, we had uh, created previously the lesson 2.dtsx package so let's quickly open up Visual Studio here. Uh, let's type Visual Studio. And we are building a solution which is SSIS tutorial solution. So I'm opening directly from here. 
this will launch Visual Studio and loads our uh, solution, SSIS solution. In that solution, there are two packages already built in. What one? The first package is lesson one dot DTSX, and the second uh, package is lesson two dot DTSX. Now, what we will do? We will create copy of lesson two dot DTSX package. So you can follow along with me. So I'm waiting for our integration services to uh, load the solution. Uh, it should load soon. Right now, it's preparing the solution. So once the solution gets prepared, I will start with the copying steps. It's still trying to retrieve some data. Should be ready soon. <laughs> okay. Now we see the lesson 2.dtsx project is loaded over here. Let's, let's close this uh, package. All right, over the right hand side, if you see, there's a solution explorer window in which we have lesson one dot DTSX package and lesson two dot DTSX package. All right, so all right, so what we need to do is we, we want to copy the lesson two dot DTSX package. So what we do, we will right click on this lesson two dot DTSX and there's a copy option. Do the copy. Once you copy the package in the solution explorer, what you can do, you can right click on the SSIS packages. And there's a paste option over here. Do a paste. So you will see a copy of lesson 6 package is created with one appended to it. Right. So all right. So what we will do? Uh let's rename this package because uh, we want it to be renamed as lesson three so let's rename it lesson three all right so now it is renamed right i don't want to open it right away so lesson three dot dtsx is the package name now double click on the package to open it all right so package is uh, opened in the design view all right now what we will do we will right click anywhere in the background of the control flow design surface we are on the control flow tab if you see from here now right click anywhere in the background of control flow design surface and uh, select properties it will show you the properties over here now by default it generates the new id but here uh, if you take a look here, there's an ID section. So it has the ID starting with 4918. So if you want to generate a new ID, which we would recommend. Otherwise, uh, what we have seen so far is the, every package has its own ID. But yeah, you can generate a new one. Let's generate a new one. So a new ID is generated. So we are fine over here. Let's save the project. All right. So this one is done. Now what we will do is let's go to the so first step is completed so if we go back to notes the step one is completed where we have copied the lesson two package as lesson three package now step two will be to add and configure the logging so let's dive into that so in add and configure logging what we will do we will enable the logging for the data flow right so there's a data on the data flow tab we have uh, data flow components it's trying to load the components right away so these are the data flow components so in this uh, tutorial what we will do we will enable the logging for the data flow in this lesson 3.dtsx package then what we will do after enabling the login so let me write it down uh, we will enable the login after enabling the login what we will do we will configure our text file log provider so this is one of the loggers available as we were discussing previously text file logger 
so we will configure a text file logger log provider all right to log the pipeline execution plan all right so uh, this uh, what is a pipeline basically pipeline is this flow of information so we can say this whole is a pipeline this whole thing is a pipeline where data flows from one step to another so what we will do we will configure a text file log provider to log the pipeline execution plan so whatever the pipeline is executing this particular pipeline we will log all that information all right so now you get the idea of the what the pipeline is and what we are logging right so what we will do we will log the pipeline execution plan and pipeline execute trees event events all right so we will log the execution plan as well as the pipeline execute trees events the text file log provider creates logs that are easy to view at transport so this is another point the text files log provider creates logs uh, that are easy to view and transport this is one of the benefits or features of the text file log providers and the simplicity of these logs makes uh, the files useful during the basic testing phase of the package all right so so these log files are basically these log files are simple simple and are uh, useful during the basic testing phase of package all right and we can also view the log entries in the log events window of the ssis designer as well so we will show you shortly so we can view the log entries in the file itself basically or we can view the log entries in the log events window there is a log event window in, uh, in ssis designer so we can view the log entries over there as well if logging is enabled all right guys so i hope you get it till this point now uh, let me uh, go back to visual studio and take you through a practical now what we'll do we will add logging to the package so what you can do on the ssis menu so go to extension ssis select the logging option so once you hit on login and uh, before guys make sure you're not on the data flow uh, you're not on the control flow tab because we are adding the data uh, logging for the pipeline which is available on the data flow tab so make sure you're on the data flow tab before you go to extension ssis and uh, click on login option all right so just ensure that now the next step is to configure the we get the configure ssis logs uh, dialog box for the lesson 3.dtsx package now on the left hand side we have container pane right and make sure the topmost objective selected so which is lesson 3 right the topmost objective is lesson 3 and this object uh, the topmost object represents the lesson 3 package all right so we have selected that under the container section now on the providers and logs tab so this is the provider and logs tab and in the provider type box so this is a provider type box what we need to select is we need to select ssis log provider for text file so right now the ssis log provider for sql survey is selected what we need to do here is select different logger which is, which will be ssis log provider for text files so i have selected that right 
we can now configure the new log provider all right now in the name section over here right so once you select this SSI is log provider for text file, you need to click on the add button, right? So once you click add, uh, you see that log provider is added over here, right? So basically when you click on the add button, the integration services add a new uh, text file log provider to the package with the default name SSI is log provider for text files. We will now configure the new log provider. So in the name section, let me rename it to lesson three log file. All right. And uh, we can also optionally modify the description here as well, um, which is right now writes log entries for events to a CSV file. However, I'm not uh, modifying the description, but yeah, you, if you like, you may go ahead and modify the description as well. Now in the configuration column, which is third column, select a new connection option. So if you click on the drop down, it will give you a new connection option. Click on the new connection. And basically we do new connection to specify where integration services writes the log information. All right. So it opens the file connection manager editor dialog box. And where we need for the usage type, what we will do, we will select create file. So right now existing file is selected, but what we will do, we will create a new file, right? And then we need to browse. So let's click on browse. And by default, the uh, select file dialog box opens the project folder, but you can save the log information to any of the location. So let me create a folder with the name SSIS logging uh, in the my documents folder. Let's do our logging here. All right. So we will, we have selected the SSIS logging folder and uh, the name of the log file I'm providing here is tutorial log dot log uh, will be the name of the file because the extension is selected here is all file star dot star. So I'm specifying here the extension as well, which will be the dot log extension and the file name will be tutorial log. Now let's click on the open button. So it will, uh, the login will create a new file with this name. Now select OK to uh, close the file connection manager editor dialog box. Now in the containers pane, which is on the left hand side, right? Expand all the nodes. So let's expand on this. So we have already expanded all the nodes of the package. Container hierarchy and uh, then clear all the checkboxes. So let's clear all the checkboxes over here. All right, I've cleared all the checkboxes, uh, including the extract uh, sample currency data. I have unchecked it. Now select a checkbox for uh, extract sample currency data. So let's select this extract sample currency data to get only the events for this particular node all right so once i selected that on the right hand side i got that uh, provider log file uh, all right so uh, what i need to do i need to just select this extract sample currency data right it will basically give the events uh, for this node only now in the state of the extract sample currency data checkbox appear uh, dimmed instead of selected the task uses the log settings of the parent container so in case this particular setting is dimmed uh, what what it refers is that the task will use the settings of the parent container if you cannot enable the log events at that that are specific to a task all right and in order to do that, we basically uncheck the parent checkbox, right? Now on the details tab, right, which basically list out all the events, right? In the events column, so this is the events column, the first column. What we need to do is we need to select the pipeline execution plan, which is given over here. 
pipeline execution plan and second thing is pipeline execution trees the description for both these events is given over here the pipeline execution event refers to the execution plan of the data flow which it will lock and the pipeline execution trees is the input the scheduler had when forming the execution plan so it it, it captures all the inputs etc now once you select both these uh, two options right then there's the advanced button which you need to click on so if you select any log provider click advanced to review the details of the log provider what it particular writes so that now what it will write it will write the pipeline execution plan and these are computer operator source name execution id etc source id it will log all the all this information whatever check boxes are checked it will log all this information and this information can be reviewed in the advanced tab so select advanced uh, button to review the details of the log providers writes all the log writes to a log for each event by default on information categories are automatically selected uh, for the events you specify and we can select on basic to hide the information categories and go back to the previous page now on the provider and log tab uh, which is the first tab in the name box name column all right select the lesson 3 log file right and after you have created a log provider for your package you can optionally deselect it to turn off logging Alright, so right now if you select it, it will enable the login. Later on, you can deselect it as well to turn off the login. And uh, there is no need, uh, specific need to delete a particular uh, logger from here. But instead, what we can do, we can simply uncheck this option to uh, disable the login. So we don't need to recreate the log provider every time. Now let's click on OK so now logging is added right now what we will do we will come to step three what we will do we will test the package created so far all right so let's go to uh, visual studio in this task we will run the lesson 3.dtsx package which is the, this one we will run this package now as this package runs the log events window lists the log entries all right we'll show you soon so the log event windows list the log entries that ssis writes to the log file by the log provider so we can watch out the log events window for any of the log entries as well now after the package uh, finishes the execution uh, you can view the contents of the log file as well all right so let's uh, check the package layout right uh, so on the control flow tab we are fine it should be like this and the data flow tab is also looking okay all right now let's go ahead and on the SSIS menu select log events so let's check this option so it it has opened up the log events window because we want to see the blogging here as well so that's why we have turned on this window and on the debug menu let's go to the debug menu and start debugging which will basically run the package and after the package has completed running we will stop the debugging so let's start the package and once the package execution is complete we will stop the debugging so i've started the package let's see if log event window shows us anything So right now package execution is happening and package steps are being executed, right? So it is basically loading the package data <laughs> for all the currency files. So I think it is done now because all the steps has uh, green check, check marks. So let's uh, stop the debugging. Uh, go to debug menu and uh, stop the debugging i don't see anything on the log events window though 
let's see if there is something logged in the uh, generated log file and we will notepad or any other editor to open the same so let's go there and in the documents uh, i've created the ssis logging folder and this is the log file tutorial log dot log let's open it so here we see that logging has happened right we see all the information gets logged a complete description of the information generated for the pipeline execution plan this is pipeline execution trees and this one is the pipeline execution plan so a complete description of the information generated for the pipeline execution plan and pipeline execution trees events uh, all right now the complete description of these uh, pipeline execution plan and pipeline execution trees is uh, beyond the scope of this tutorial so we will not be discussing uh, these uh, logs here in detail but i've just shown you how you can log certain information now in the log file you can see that the first line exists uh, line first the first line lists the information fields so which are remind computer operator source source id these are the information fields so there are about 10 fields right specified in the details tab all right of the configured ssis logs dialog box so these are the fields uh, configured there you can also see the integration services log the two events that you selected uh, this is the first event uh, pipeline execution trees and the second one is the pipeline execution plan for each iteration of a for each loop so it logs the both the events for all the iteration of the for loop which is loading all the currency files in the one of the tables so yeah guys this is how login is being performed and let's close the file all right so let's go back to the project so guys we are done with this lesson 3 dtsx project let's uh, see how much we have recorded let's close the log events window in our next video we will discuss about how you can add error flow redirection with the ssis so we will cover that for this video i think we should keep it uh, till here uh, we have uh, completed the logging thing logging process and in our next video we will cover the cover adding error flow redirection with ssis we will talk about the error flow redirection and show you some practical so guys i thank you so much for your time on this video i hope you like this video if you really like this video please click on the like button below this video guys if you are new to this channel and if you have not already subscribed to this channel there is a subscribe button below this video click on that subscribe button it will give you a bell icon click on that bell icon select all notifications to get notifications regarding all my future videos also guys please do share your comments with us any requirements any suggestions any day-to-day -day experiences with sql server any situations where my content uh, helped you in some way or not also guys if you have a good network of friends please and uh, if they are also working in the sql server domain please ask them to uh, please share my videos with them and also ask them to uh, subscribe to my channel if you feel that my videos uh, can make a difference in their life please do share my videos with them and uh, ask them to subscribe to my channel i thank you once again uh, for your time on this video today and you have a wonderful day ahead guys thank you